TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Ben in San Jose. Ben, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I just wanted to thank you and your team and everything. I've been using your technique with the 10-minute charts, watching the VIX, and uh, just making a fortune here on the futures. Isn't it interesting? <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's wonderful. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, kind of a weird week, right? We have a half day tomorrow, so uh, this show won't uh, be airing. I think we the market closes about like 1 p.m. Eastern time. Obviously, we are off uh, for the 4th of July, and then we'll be back Friday uh, for a full day. Let's see what's kind of going on right now. Uh, in the E-mini, we're up about 0.41%. You know, I mean, this is just going to be expected to not have a lot go on. Now, there's, like, lighter volume, so you do, you know, run the potential of some some quick moves to the upside or, or whatever some of the makers want to do. But as it stands, you know, we just kind of moving a little bit sideways. Still up 0.41%, which is decent. Uh, Russell Future up about 0.21%. NQ's up uh, about 0.87%. I believe the comp is up about 0.7%. Uh, currently, those Dow Futures up about a quarter of a percent. And same with the Dow Jones itself. And then those gold contract is completely sideways, a little bit to the downside, 0.06%. Trading at 2,337 and 60 cents. And silver is trading at 29.79. And then copper still right at that area. I have faith in that contract. Some point. Crude trading at 82.92. We're definitely moving up into that. Uh, trading range there. You know, I spoke with Teddy Kekstad, I believe, sometime last week. I believe it was Monday. Um, and we should have that segment up on our YouTube channel. Strongly recommend checking that out. Uh, give us a like and subscribe while you're there. But that way you can kind of, you know, I mean, if you want to go back and listen to something, it's a good way to do it. All right. Let's look at that dollar trading at 105.71. Uh, still coming off a little bit from that 106 area, but that's okay. We are still up in the higher trading range. And as, you know, Europe is on track to kind of decrease interest rates. I mean, the dollar is only going to get stronger. Uh, we did have some uh, some positive news regarding inflation from Powell earlier. Uh, what else are we looking at right here? Oh, yeah. We can do this segment, which is how quickly can Disney vaporize Jacob's portfolio until he's forced to hold it. So we're trading at 97.33 right now. Let's take a look at what they got going on. I mean, here's the big news. And, and this is not news. We've spoken about this before multiple times, but it's the streaming platform. It's burned up $11 billion in operating losses since 2019. It's not forecasted to make a profit until the end of this year. Okay, the experiences generated $2.3 billion of operating income. Okay, that's decent. And so it looks like they're going to start focusing a little bit more on that. Of course, in, uh, I believe Universal Studios out in Orlando has, um, you know, I mean, they, they've, they've expanded pretty quickly. So I think Disney is focusing on that. They had spent a bunch of money. Let me see here real quick. If I get the number for it. Yeah, so they're, okay, so check, check this out. This is announced back in September 2023, but still this is, you know, rolling in. They would invest $60 billion in its experience division over the next decade. It's widely reported that this would all be directed at theme parks, but a close reading of the filings reveals the parks will only get half the total, with the difference spent on Disney's cruise line, as well as maintenance and technology upgrades. That's interesting. And, you know, there's this common thought as well that, like, uh, you know, it tends to be the boomers who like cruise lines, but I think that is changing, at least for certain demographics in, uh, maybe not so much in Gen X, but millennials as well. Uh, nevertheless, $30 billion investment in its theme park. It's still around 60 times the sum spent on uh, the Paris, Disneyland. Anyways, they're spending a bunch of money. It's about to be 750 acres uh, that they're expanding out in Orlando, and that'll be through the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, which is pretty nuts. And I think that's the way to focus on it. I still don't necessarily get the logic in dumping so much money in their own streaming platform. I mean, I would just... 
I'm sure there's some commentary on it out there, but the, the way that I see it is they're not a streaming company. They're definitely, you know, I mean, they're huge in movies and, and entertainment. I get that. But at some certain point, I, I feel like licensing might be better. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a unique product, too. So, say you want to license out to, like, Hulu or, or Netflix or whatever, you know, I mean, you can charge those companies more money for it. I don't know. If it is profitable, you know, I'll eat my words. And if, it, if it's super profitable, then, then definitely. But uh, as it stands now, I mean, we're trading at 97.29. We go back, what, like three years? Yeah. Let's see if we go back further. I mean, you know, we're trading up like 182. I mean, we've just, you know, completely gone out on this stock. I, I don't know. I don't think it has much more to go down. You know, we can test this like February level and, you know, reject that. I mean, I don't think we're going to reject it with heavy volume if we do. I think we'll probably just consolidate around this level. And we might get some, you know, a regular kind of movement up to the upside like that. But uh, still, you know, with, with them just in the meantime investing into the experiences that won't be realized until, let's say, five years, a decade down the line, and then Disney Plus still burning capital. Yeah, I don't know. I just... I obviously have a personal problem with that stock just because it makes them a, it's not a significant portion, but a decent portion of, of my personal portfolio. And it's just like, I, I don't know what to do with the thing. Let's take a look. We have some numbers coming out from the cars. Obviously, Tesla is huge in the market. This, this stock doesn't quit. And, I, you know, shorting it just always messes you over. You know, Tesla trading up 8.78%. So they actually did have better Q2 deliveries than anticipated. Um, I would argue probably some of that is due uh, to China and that economy kind of rebounding a little bit. So total deliveries in Q2 were 440, I'll just say round it, 444,000 vehicles. And uh, Q2 production was 410,831 there. Uh, analysts expected Tesla deliveries to hit 439,000, so they beat that pretty strongly. Uh, the total number of deliveries in the second quarter fell 4.8% uh, from a year earlier, but rose 14.8% from the first quarter. Deliveries are the closest approximation of sales disclosed by electric vehicle maker. Tesla's current lineup includes Model Y. We know all of this. Yeah, that's blown up. Uh, GM as well. Let's see here. Up just minorly right now, 0.51%, but their sales surge, which is pretty solid for them, uh, reported on Tuesday that the U.S. Uh, auto sales saw a slight rebound in the second quarter, but the car maker's EV sales rocketed. It's a poss possible sign that the anticipated ramp in production of newer electric vehicles is finally here. Sales estimate for, for Q2 for General Motors was 697,804, and they delivered 696,000, so that's a little bit below. But the fact that the EV market is gaining some traction for them is awesome because they dumped a bunch of money in it. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. 
This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Now, we were talking about the Disney experience in the last segment, and we want to do that too at TFNN. So come join me on this journey. We're going to go to TFNN.com, all right? Get a bunch of cool stuff to check out. Strongly recommend just perusing and seeing what you can find. But for the purposes of right now, we're going to go to the Newsletters tab, okay? Down here on the second row, first column, we have the opening call Newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, I have sung high praises about this newsletter, and uh, I mean it. I read it every day. I think it's extremely interesting. I think Basil has an extraordinarily unique and effective approach to analyzing the markets. And uh, I've learned quite a bit, uh, doubly as well, you invest in this. You can see here he has a subscriber webinar. Now, he does this every so often, which is great. But when you subscribe, you can get access to his subscriber webinars as well. Um, which is great. Now, you'll see that more when you subscribe. This is something a little bit separate, but uh, regardless, it is fantastic. Basil Chapman, how are you doing? Jacob, I am well. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, I'm interested to see what we have going on right now. Uh, kind of not a lot going on in the market, at least as I can see it right now. So I'm interested to see what you have. Uh, you can't see the chart, right? Um, yes. Give me one moment. Yes, and I can see good. the chart. Let me move it over here. Okay, good. So what I want you to say is that this is a, a period fraught with uh, conflicting uh, sector movements. Uh, there's a very interesting pattern that I'm looking at here in the Dow uh, that in the middle, so on the left side is the Dow daily chart. Let me just get my pointer. There it is. On the left side is the Dow daily. In the middle is the Dow weekly chart with all the Chapman wave notations, et cetera. And on the right is the monthly chart. I'll go backwards for the moment. In the monthly chart, since we've just started July, we made a peak D. Now, in the Chapman wave methodology, it's a very simple technique at its core. You look for the lowest low bar. You count each successively higher peak. At a certain point, if it starts, the technical starts to improve, it gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode. The moment I say buy mode, it implies that it should go to at least four higher peaks. Uh, that means that it goes alphabetically A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. The fourth highest peak, peak D, is where other things can happen. Just here in the corner, you can see there was a, a high of 40,077 on the 20th of May. It's where we actually went short to short term position in the Dow, uh, one to one short the DOG, that is. Mm -hmm. And we have called long positions for some time. Didn't want to touch those. Those are uh, long one-to-one, one, one one, but also three-to-one. 
So that means uh, we have kept that. The bias is towards the upside. And the short-term trend, we've had a pullback. And now we've gone peak A, peak B, peak C. Now, this is very interesting. So D is where other things can happen. The implication being that if you get a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, there should be at least four higher peaks. Well, look at this. On the, on the monthly chart, you've got to a peak D. Now we're having a little bit of a hiatus here, just a breather, uh, because the technicals are strong enough to say there should be higher highs to come. The weekly chart, and this is what I mean, that the weekly chart is just kind of stuck. It's in the middle of the parameters of the 40,000, it's called a 40,100 for the moment, and the lows here at the 37,800 area, just kind of stuck in the middle, not breaking down, but not breaking up. So that says that there are specific Dow stocks that this is the Dow itself. So the Dow 30, I call it the Dow 30 because it's really not the Dow industrials anymore. They're just two or three industrials <laughs> like Caterpillar. So this is just, it's a really perfect example of the overall economy of the United States. So in this particular instance, what we're looking at, it's a sideways motion. We've kind of got that in the Dow. Now, ironically enough, the diamonds, which is the trading vehicle for the Dow, the DIA right here, that has gone to a peak D and it's pulling back a little bit, but it's walking the nine period moving average. So, so far, that's all very good action. So what I wanted to say is the tech sector represented by the SMHs, the semiconductor index, has had a pretty decent pullback from the 279 level on the 20th of June. And it's kind of been stuck. And for markets to move higher without the semiconductors, it's really unusual because they lead the markets up and they lead the markets down. And that's just suggesting to me that there's some kind of a rotation going on. That's the thing we have to keep in mind, that if you're having uh, uh, instruments, uh, stocks or uh, ETFs that are in the sector that's taking a breather, it can get very tiresome just looking at it because it's not participating for the first time in a long time for the past two, three weeks, the semiconductors have been stuck. However, if you look at an Apple, the Mag 7, this is, look at this, as we speaking, it's at an all time high. It just broke above the previous high. Now it means in the weekly chart, it's in leg C. In the monthly chart, it's leg C. It means it's still bullish for 2024. If you look at Amazon, Amazon, just started a leg D in the daily chart. It's only a leg B in the weekly chart, and it's a leg C in the monthly chart. Very positive. Microsoft has a, a different kind of a pattern because it has a pattern that's just been making higher highs and higher lows. It's trading at uh, an all-time high as we speak at 458.76 of 2.03. And look at this weekly chart. It's got a particular pattern. In my show tomorrow in the Tiger Technicians Hour, I'll take a little time and I'll go through this because it's becoming a little bit more common. This particular pattern here, we actually have a, a, an instrument at this point as core. Uh, this is core mining, core to lean. It used to be called this the silver stock, and it had the same pattern this oval pattern that I call the stalk leg, it hasn't broken it, but it's extended a little bit longer. And there's a pattern in the weekly. So I'll talk about the, this particular pattern tomorrow in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour. So I want you to go back to this and say, so Microsoft, I think is kind of, I, I should mention, we, we're along Microsoft from 338. Mm -hmm. So Microsoft trading at 458 right now. Um, it represents the Dow, the S&P, the, the NASDAQ, the XLK, which is the S&P Tech Spider Fund, and it has AIQ. So when I go to AIQ, we still have a position in the AIQ, the Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF, uh, just a couple of pennies of its all-time high as we speak. And that's what I was saying, that if you're in a sector that's stalling, it can be very frustrating. But if you're in a sector that's really working, I don't want to get in, in the way of that. And that's really my theme right now is to stay. If you're in any of those stocks that are going to all time highs or acting very well over the last two weeks, I recommend just staying. You can raise your stops if you want to take a little bit off. There's mm -hmm. absolutely no problem with that. But these are the leaders. And I suspect in 20 in the summer that, you know, we're in, just starting the summer here in the Boston area. But in the summer, over the next two months to three months, I think they're going to be higher highs to come because those weekly charts, look at each one of these, and the, we're talking about this is the middle chart right here. That's a weekly chart. That's really strong to get 
AIQ, the uh, Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF, to really slump, it would have to take a dive from the 36s down to under 31. If you want Microsoft to reverse, you're gonna something's going to have to happen to really knock it down. It'd have to get into the body of this, I call it the stork leg formation. So this body, it would have to get underneath 430, and here it is trading at 458. So I think the theme has to be what's working, stay with what's working. But there's a sector that I'm interested in, and that's, and I'll talk about that tomorrow in my show, but in the IWM, the Russell 2000, has just started to show some kind of uh, staying power, and I think that that's what I'm going to be keeping my eye on for subscribers over the next few weeks. If we can get the Russell 2000 to rally, that's the small caps, that's great. Basil, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Folks, we'll be right back. Thank you very much, Jacob. It works for some. It oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We were just joined with Basil Chapman of the uh, opening call newsletter. Now, I want to say, you know, one, you, you know, buy this, okay? Uh, you can get access not only to his daily uh, newsletter. He also does something on Saturday as well, which is super unique, and I enjoy that too. 
uh, but then also some of his subscriber newsletters. If it is your first time subscribing to any newsletter we have on TFNN, uh, you have a 30-day money-back guarantee in case for whatever reason it doesn't jive with your style or you don't have enough time, whatever it is, uh, that is totally okay. Uh, before we go to our next, next guest, I just want to talk real quick about uh, Eli Lilly. Um, well, you know what? Actually, we can save that for the end. Ha, get the... That's show business right there. So let's move over here. We'll, we'll go back to Google. Let's type in board-oracle.com. Now, we are joined on the Tom O'Brien Show every Tuesday and Thursday by Tim Ord. Now, Tim has been in the game, uh, I think, for longer than I've been alive, which is pretty cool to say. And uh, we love having him on. I mean, I strongly value his analysis. He teaches me a ton every time he's on. And uh, it's fantastic. So I strongly recommend going to check him out over at the Ord-Oracle.com. And uh, we are joined by Tim Ord. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. So absolutely, we dive in here and see what's going on? I think so. All right. Uh, chart number one. Fantastic. Uh, uh, the bottom window is the – this is looks at the bigger trend. This is the monthly chart. chart goes back to – uh, to mid 2019 looks like about that anyhow and so all you start looking at the big chart to see what the big picture is and see if there's any bad signs starting to show up and so far there's not uh, the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio and normally when you go in into highs the VIX starts to rise you know sometimes weeks before a lot of times months before and that's the reason why i do it on a monthly chart the monthlies are act more accurate than the weeklies and actually the weeklies right now are giving kind of a bearish sign but the monthlies have not yet so on a short-term basis the trend's still up but the, to get a signal for this type of indicator when the spx fix ratio makes lower highs as the vic as the uh, excuse us as the spx makes higher highs that's a negative divergence that's what happens near highs and right now we got the SPX VIX ratio going higher it actually is kind of going sideways here over the last month while still the SPX is still making higher highs that could be a warning sign but it's not a bearish sign it's not it's kind of a neutral sign mm -hmm. but it's not a sign that you act on bars going short or anything because uh, we can still have the VIX go lower before the month's out and still have this ratio go higher uh so we'll see but right now it's uh, that ratio is saying not bearish but uh, but it's not really bullish either uh so at the moment i think the trend's still up we got some short-term uh stuff flip to chart two we'll go to the short-term picture totally. so hear me a term picture is uh it can turn to bullish it's too soon to say um but it also could be bearish, but you know, on a short-term basis, it trends up. So on chart two, we're looking at the, the short-term picture. And if you notice, the top window is the SPY. And that chart, of, if you look over the last 10 days, that virtually has gone exactly sideways. It hasn't gone up, it hasn't gone down. And I've seen these patterns before when the market even hits a low, goes sideways, or hits a high, goes sideways. And I put uh, some Fibonacci relationships on there compared to the last low, which was basically uh, late May. Uh, I put a Fibonacci, uh, those blue lines across there are Fibonacci levels. Yeah. And the market has not even pulled back to the 38.2% retracement. It's, it's not even pulled back probably 15%. I see. Uh, so... Uh, so and also, I got colored in there um, in the light pink, the areas where panic has formed in the trend. So that's what, what panic trend only forms at bottoms. And I see I said this a lot of times on the show. And when the trend's at one point two or higher, they got a couple of one point one nines in there, but that's close enough. But at one point two or higher shows there's panic in the market. And when there's panic, you're near a low. And I shaded that pink area where the panic occurred. So we're actually in a support area. Uh, so what the market's actually doing here without virtually no retracement whatsoever is building cause for the next uh, next rally higher. And how high is high, I don't know. Um, I did a, a lot of times these sideways move where there's virtually no retracement. A lot of times that marks a halfway move. Of a halfway point of the move up 
And if you do that, that from the uh, it'd be the May low, which yeah. uh, that's the first blue line at the bottom there. It looks like about five eighteen round off numbers, five seventeen. And you go up to the high, which is about five forty seven. That's that's about thirty S and P points or SPX points is three hundred points. If you do the if you take that as the halfway point of the next move up, there's about a five point five percent rally coming. Yeah. Uh, for that analysis, uh, that works out. That's just projection. It's not, you know, a recommendation. That's exactly where it's going to go. But a lot of times, these halfway moves do point at the halfway mark. So, in July, seasonality-wise, around the July Fourth time way, time frame, there's usually a good rally right around before. Uh, sometimes it starts before July Fourth. Sometimes it starts a little bit after. But they call it the summer rally, and so we're going into a favorable seasonality period right now. And we got all the ingredients for a rally to, to actually start. We got panic in the trend readings. We got a Fibonacci relationship that, firstly, is not even pulled back. You know, ten, fifteen percent. Right. Market's gone uh, sideways for ten days in a row. That's counting today. Uh, we're up a little bit, but in general, we we haven't really broke out yet. Uh, so we're building quite a bit of energy to push push higher here even, uh, even for the short term and if you look at VIX right now uh, not on this chart but if you look on the VIX real time we're uh, touching uh, recent new lows uh, so all that stuff says we're probably going to start a rally if it has, if, if it's starting today maybe maybe I'll wait you know Thursday whatever but it's probably going to start in this time frame right now it's at least going to go for a couple of weeks, maybe uh, you know, maybe into August. I don't know. Uh, so, but uh, short-term picture is actually looking pretty good. I, we're heading into a break here. I see. We could wait. Yeah. I so I want to ask one more time. When obviously when panic forms, you're at the bottom, right? Because everyone's trying to sell and move out, and you're going to lose steam for that. But so when it's not retracing back to let's just say the three eight two on the Fibonacci. That's indicative of a halfway move. Maybe we can we just go over that one more time. You said it clearly, but I just want to, you know, for my personal edification, want to hear that again. Uh, if we can go over it just one more time when you get back. All right. Sounds good. Folks, okay. stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien! Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We were just going over this spy chart here. And, Tim, I just wanted to hear one time, one more time. When you're... Right, uh... Yeah. Right. If you're right. having a sideways right. movement, right. it's not retracing. You're going to go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. Uh, we're talking about the retracement. In other words, the market's gone sideways here. There's no retracement. Right. It's kind of said in the books, I guess, when a when a market retraces 50 percent or actually 38 percent, point two or less, a lot of times that's the halfway point to the move up. If the market goes down to 50 percent retracement. Then it can still do a halfway point of the move up, but a lot of times it makes a double top. And if the market retraces 38.2 uh, or 61.8% uh, retracement, a lot of times that's a deep retracement against the previous rally. And that suggests the next high will be a double top. So, my See. point the less a market retraces, the more stronger that market is. Because if it can't even pull back in a consolidation, um, then that, uh, for, put it this way, the less the market pulls back, the more stronger that market is to the upside. Fantastic. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It is does. That, Thank you so much. That's awesome. All right. Well, we so can move to chart take three a look as well. At, uh, chart three then. Yeah, absolutely. See all right. Uh, I got this chart goes you know, uh, uh, goes back first part of the year or whatever. And I kind of uh, circled in red there. Uh, retracements, all of them, uh, well, actually, what I'm trying to do here, if you go to the bottom window, it's the uh, Bollinger Band width. So as the Bollinger Band width contracts, in other words, comes together, and that's how, that's the bottom, uh, that's the bottom indicator. So when the, when the Bollinger Bands are what I call pinching, so the market is, is a lot of ops that goes on. When it's pinching, there's a large move coming. When the Bollinger Bands are wide apart, then a lot of times the market's going to go into a narrow range. Right now, uh, I pointed out the previous times when the upper and lower band are the closest level together, and, and that's those blue lines across the chart. And they usually come right before a move in the market. Uh, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Doesn't really give you the direction. But right now we got a big pinch in the Bollinger Bands on the dailies. Right, or actually this is a 1.95 uh, minute uh, chart. So it's it's um, it's actually a two bar chart for the day. Uh, so it's it's what 60 minutes. So that's about about half of day of trading in 1.100. 195 minutes, about a half day of trading. Mm -hmm. But you can see that the Bollinger Bands are coming together um, on on the current um, setup we're having right now. And that also just a big, uh, not, uh, I hate, hate to say violent move, but uh, uh, we're about to end the sideways consolidation and end into an impulse wave. And so, and since we haven't not really pulled back at all, uh, it could be a pretty good rally starting at, I don't know, any day. You know, it could be even starting today. I don't know. Uh, doesn't have to be today. Could wait until next week. But very short term, this market's about ready to take off to the upside. 
because the Bollinger Bands are pinching, and we got, according to uh, Chart Two, we got panic in the in the region we're in right now, and so panic only comes up bottom. So the only direction this market really can go is up on a short term basis, and the Bollinger Band pinch kind of gets gets the reinforcement of idea that uh, we're going to see some energy in the market here in the coming weeks, and it looks like it'll be to the upside. So right on. Um, could, could be kind of fun for the next, you know, two, three, four, five weeks. Don't know how long the rally will last, but it could be fun. We could switch now to uh, the gold market if you want. Absolutely, yeah. We also or, or you got we have questions. Some people... You got questions on the S and P's. We can go back and, you know, uh, if, you, if you want to have no, you no have questions I... on the S P. No, I think that was great. Um, and everyone else, I'm reading in the YouTube. And in the, some of the private messages in the den, that was that was awesome. We do actually have some people asking about uh, at least some of the gold and silver miners as well, just overall. So I'm I'm sure they're looking forward to hearing uh, this next segment as well. All right, okay. Uh, this is a bigger chart we showed it in the past. We actually talked about it going into May 31st, which May 31st uh, was a, a major signal on the monthly charts because you got to wait for the close of the month for the signal to generate. And on May 31st, uh, signals were generated on this indicator on actually two different types of indicators. But the bottom window is a monthly cumulative up-down volume with the Bollinger Band. And the next window higher is a, a cumulative monthly advanced decline and with the Bollinger Band. And when you get a close above the mid-Bollinger Band on both those indicators, that triggers a multi-month, if not a multi-year buy signal. And that buy signal came on actually as it jumped, if you go to the top window, as it jumped the neckline of a head and shoulders bottom. So we're now above the neckline. Neckline depends how you draw it. It could be 33, 34, but in this vicinity, that's where the neckline lies. You can actually, you can make it draw it at 32 if you can stretch the rules a little bit. But anyhow, you know, we've jumped above the neckline and we've been virtually gone nowhere over the last uh, couple of weeks. We're kind of just Holding power padding. Uh, holding power, normally you have a consolidation, then you have an impulse wave. Then you have a consolidation or a narrow range, then you have an impulse wave. So this little sideways move that's been going on uh, all of June and uh, uh, so far is actually building energy. Either it's going to go up or down, but we already got uh, – these two indicators already jumped above the mid-Bollinger Band for the only direction to go right now as far as the, the gold market is up because uh, these monthly indicators really don't whip around. They get above the mid-Bollinger Band, and they stay there for months. They get below the mid-Bollinger Band, and they stay there for months. So they don't usually go above and below it back and forth. Uh, sometimes those weekly charts do, which will flip to chart five. Yep, give me one second here. Perfect. We have it up right now. Okay. Chart five is those same two indicators, but on a weekly time frame. And it's a little bit more whippy in, in, in the weekly charts. But what I want to point out is a far right window. I have a kind of a blown up view on a far right window. And the top window is a GDX, and I circle it in red. I have a red line or a red arrow pointing down on that. Uh, yeah. What I want to point out, though, if you know these two indicators, this is on a weekly time frame, are actually kind of going. They retrace a little bit, but they're holding up against their their highs pretty much. Um, so actually, both of them. The second window up from the bottom is the up down volume, and and the third window up from the bottom uh, is the advanced decline, and both of them are cumulative. And even though the market is retraced here, these indicators are pretty much holding close to their highs, even though they retrace a little bit, uh, and the and the S or GDX has retraced some, these indicators are holding very strong, suggesting the up-down volume and, and uh, advanced decline indicators are actually uh, building strength in the market. So uh, it looks to me that we've got another impulse wave coming here pretty quick. Fantastic. Tim, stay right there. We have a short summing up next, but we have one more chart. And a little bit of this to do, and I know we all want to hear that if you can stay. Yep, folks, can do. we will be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Stay right there.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, folks. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We were just going over some stuff to do with the GDX. Uh, Tim, we only have a short segment, but I'd love to hear uh, your kind of thoughts on this before we end the show. All right. Uh, let's go to chart six. This is a, this is a short-term view of what's going on. And uh, the bottom window seems to work the best. It's a 50-day average of the up-down volume. And this indicator, as long as it stays above zero, the uptrend's intact. We got a buy signal from this indicator. It looks like about first of May, uh, first of April, and it's still on a buy signal, even though this market uh, GDX has actually pulled back from 37 to 33, whatever. Uh, the, the internals are still actually very strong, and uh, suggests that if you're long, you should stay long. Uh, so I think the sideways consolidations is probably just that. It's probably uh, um, you know, could could I don't know. I haven't done the retracement yet. You know, like we did with the S and P's. Right. But the you know eyeballing it here, retracement looks like about thirty eight point two percent retracement. That suggests this sideways move could be the halfway point of the move up. But this head and shoulders, uh, the top window is the GDX, and this head and shoulders pattern, which is what I think it is, has an upside target, a major target around forty five. Uh, so, um, and a lot of times July. 
and October are very important dates for the gold market. A lot of times you'll see lows in July and tops in October, or vice versa, highs in July and lows in October. I think this is a low in October, or, or the low in July, and probably a rally into October is what it's starting to look like. So uh, I think this, this, this has been kind of dull here, which is good. It's always dull before the... I guess the rally, and then when it gets really frothy, it's, it's time to, uh, to to unload. We're not even close to that. But there's more evidence that we're probably at support. Uh, this indicator at the bottom window is above zero, suggesting this rally's not done yet. So uh, it's probably a good place to buy right around this vicinity. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. That was great. All right. Talk to you Thursday. Absolutely. See you Thursday, Tim. Folks, well, we won't see you Thursday, the 4th of July, you got to enjoy that. We will see Tim Tuesday. Again, go to ord-oracle.com. Folks, thank you so much for joining us today. It was fantastic. We have a short day tomorrow off Thursday. See you again Friday. <laughs>